is the energy transition real? Is it really happening? Well, my I'm going to preview my note, and this will probably come out after uh, after I publish Super Spiked on Saturday. But my 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 theme is the energy transition needs a transition. Uh, you know, so uh, and I think you you captured it well. I think the uh, you know I would argue that right now we're on track for coal production, coal demand, I should say, to grow for the next decade. Mm. We've essentially, not entirely, but essentially eliminated coal consumption in the United States. It was going down in Europe, but now it's going to increase in Germany. But the growth is in the non-OECD. Why? Because it's abundant. It's affordable. There are a lot of secondary jobs, rail, et cetera, that comes from having coal. Uh, and by the way, it works 24-7, 365, which is the core underpinning. Right. Natural gas is going to grow for probably at least 30 more years. Oil demand, I've growing at least into the next decade. And one could say those are opinions, but I don't see anything in place for any of those three core commodities that is going to roll over demand anytime soon, short of having recession. So I'd argue we're not on track for a transition if that means we're eliminating fossil fuels, as I think it's commonly referred to, to, to quote renewables. I think there are a lot of new technologies that are coming down the road and they will grow. That's a good thing. Diversifying your energy source is a good thing. For some countries that have to import crude oil or other products, having other opportunities for energy is a good thing. But right now, I think these new technologies are going to take some of the growth wedge. And in the meantime, some of the traditional fuels are going to continue to grow. So I, I think we're not on track for an energy transition at all. But it is that ideology, that, and this is what I push back on, that we need to have a, a war on fossil fuels. Uh, and that because they had a bad track record last decade of, of low returns on capital, there should be no new CapEx, right? Both traditional investors and climate people are completely aligned in not wanting CapEx. And so if you don't have CapEx and you still have desired demand growth, you're going to have what I call a super vol environment, price spikes, but followed by price collapses because you're trying to knock out demand. And that is that is a completely unhealthy environment to be in. Price spikes are not good, including for producers because you end up with a bust on the other side, it hurts consumers, it hurts the economy, and you end up with what I call a messy energy transition, which all you've done is create economic damage, and you have no change to your greenhouse grass trajectory to the extent that is something people want. You are not going to have that either. What, what, how does any of that make mm -hmm. sense?